everyone. So today my recipe is going to be cabbage braised in cream, which sounds weird, but I guarantee you this is delicious. It comes from a blog that I really love called Bon Appetempt with Amelia Morris, an LA-based home cook who uh, came up with this recipe. It's delicious. It's a really nice different way of using cabbage. I use cabbage a ton because it's cheap, very versatile. You can do a slaw, you can saute it, you can roast it. In this case, we're going to braise it in cream. So just trust me. Um, today we are drinking a Bud Light Rattler and uh, it's so good. It's so good. So we're going to start with our cabbage. I already have this one because we used a little bit for a slaw the other night. But you're going to take, you know, a small cabbage. It's not the size of my head. I'd say, when it was all together, I'd say you want a cabbage the size of like a, a large toddler's head. That's your ideal size because then you can kind of nestle them all into one pan once you section it off. You're going to want to use a pan about this size, about this depth, and you're gonna to wanna to be able to have a lid for it. If you don't have a lid at home, totally okay. I would say use any nonstick pan you have, and then when it's time to cover it, take a baking sheet and put that on top, so at least that gets some of the steaming going. Otherwise, it's just it takes a lot longer to cook cabbage. So it's nice if you can make a seal on top, but if not, a cookie sheet will be just fine. So the ingredients you'll need for our cream braised cabbage is the toddler's head cabbage. You will need a single lemon, some olive oil, some half and half cream or whipping cream if you're feeling fancy. If you are vegan or this freaks you out, although I'm telling you to trust me, if this freaks you out, use stock. Um, milk is more tricky, but you could use milk and then add some butter at the end. You just want it to be really fatty. So. These are your ingredients, salt and pepper, perfect, your pan. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to get your pan to a high medium heat without anything in it. That won't take very long on a gas stove. There we have that going. We're gonna get ready with our woohoos. And in the meantime, we're gonna section up our cabbage. You're gonna to wanna to try and hit right through the core there, and then we're gonna take some of the core off. Where it gets tricky is you wanna leave enough on to keep it all together or it starts to fall apart as it cooks. If that happens, that's totally fine. You're just gonna saute it a little bit more and try and be delicate with the cabbage itself because ideally we keep it in wedges and it cooks in a full wedge and it braises in a full wedge. So you wanna take off those extra layers. This cabbage has been sitting in our house since the beginning of all this drama. So it's a little bit old. So I'm gonna take off a few extra layers, take off the end, right through the core, and then you're just gonna to want to trim a little bit of that core because the core is quite bitter and just hard to get through. You're not gonna to wanna to eat it that way. So, so you're gonna want your wedges to be sort of roughly the size of like a demure piece of tea cake or a pie. They're all slightly different sizes, that's totally fine. Okay, so once you have all of your wedges cut, you're going to collect all those. Your pan is getting quite hot. You're gonna take your olive oil and you're gonna to wanna to have a goodly amount of olive oil. So I'm gonna do like two big woohoos. Once it really gets pouring, woo! So we can see in there, again, like the oil's gotten pretty watery, so it's ready to go for your little cabbages. Okay, so once your oil's nice and hot, I'm a little nervous about how hot mine is, you wanna nestle the cabbage into the pan. You don't wanna overcrowd, so if they can all fit in the pan, that's fine. You can do it in batches, but let's see how we do. So you wanna put a nice sort of caramel layer onto the cabbage nice brown layer and then you're going to flip it and get both sides nice and brown. So my, so I still have, this is a bit big so I'm going to cut that again. So I have maybe one, two, three, I have five pieces in there. And you're going to want to cook those 
and then flip them, get them nice and brown on either side. You can put them on a plate in the meantime, get these going. Okay, so the cabbage is cooking away and um, the salt comes into play a little bit. So you're gonna wanna do a nice big pinch of salt and just season as you go uh, on either side. So you just wanna keep it nicely seasoned. You can put in some pepper if you're a pepper fan. Throw that in there now, throw it in later. You can throw it in at the end, but the salt you wanna get in there as early as possible. Okay, so there you go. I've just flipped my first batch. They're looking pretty nice and caramelly. You can, you know, leave them for longer if you want. It's uh, pretty forgiving. You just don't want them to burn. But as you can see, as I flip them, a little bit of layering just lodged, which is fine. Just try and flip them to the best of your ability. It's still going to taste good at the end. You want to season once you flip. Get a nice salty season. A bit more. A little bit of pepper. Leave those there. Set them off to the side on a plate. Before you put in, if you are doing it in batches, um, I would just add another little more glue of oil before you put in your next ones. You just really don't want them to stick because then things start to get very messy. Okay, so here we have all of our nicely browned cabbage. And we're just gonna nestle them into the pan. Okay, so we've nestled to the best of our abilities. You know, they're in there. And now we're gonna add our cream. Okay, so it's time to add our cream. I'm gonna take half and half. Ooh, put this here. I'm gonna pour in that cream. Smells pretty good. So you're just gonna wanna cover the first couple inches of your cabbage. And I'll show you what that looks like, but it's gonna be about, you know, an inch and a half from the bottom. I'd say that's maybe a cup and a half of cream, two cups of cream. They're all happily in there with their cream and they're gonna braise. So you're gonna put that back onto the stove. You know, bring it up to a medium heat. You're going to want to just start to see like the heat coming off of the cream. It's just enough to bring it to a bubble and you're going to put the lid on. Okay, so the cream's starting to bubble. You're going to want to turn this right down to a simmer on a fairly low heat. And you want to put on your lid or your baking sheet or whatever it is that you're using to cover and you're going to let it sit for about 15 minutes. Okay, so it's been about 15, 20 minutes. These guys are looking great. So I'm gonna flip them for another 15 or 20 minutes. You'll notice when you're flipping them that the cream has started to separate a little bit into almost like more of a, more of a broken down, not a curd. I don't wanna say curd, cause that freaks people out. Although that's what's gonna happen once you add the lemon. Um, but it's just started to break down. And so what you're left with is more of the like residual creamy fat, which is the delicious part. Um, but don't worry about your milk curdling or your cream rather curdling. That's not what's happening. It's just being cooked down. And that's what gives it this like creamy base so that when you actually eat the cabbage, it's like it's in this like cream sauce, which is ideally what we're going for. Okay, so I have flipped the cabbage. It's almost done cooking for the next 15, 20 minutes. So in the meantime, I'm gonna prep my lemon. I'm gonna cut that in half, and you're gonna to wanna to juice it just, I try to not juice directly into a dish because lemons are so seedy. Seedy lemons. So I'm just gonna squeeze it by hand. Sometimes I put another hand underneath to catch the seeds. Fish those puppies out. Mmm. Again, you want it to yield, um, where the core is, it's probably not going to yield as easily. I don't tend to eat the core, I sort of eat around it. Um, it can be a little bit firmer. So here's where we're at right now. A lot of the cream has been eaten up by the cabbage. You want it to, yeah, like that's nice and tender. Great. Okay, so I think it's just about ready to come off the heat. And this one here. I'm gonna do a little sploosh 
lemon juice, a little bit of salt, a little pepper to finish. Okay, so you're pretty well ready to go with your caramelized cream braised cabbage. Trust me, it's delicious, it's nutty, it's fatty, it's very flavorful. Um, it's a nice way to mask cabbage if you don't like the taste, uh, but it's a really good use for cabbage. So let's give it a try. I like the dunk on the bottom too. I try and like get some more of that going. so good. Oh my god. It's such a nice use of cabbage. Really, I highly recommend this. Okay, well, thank you so much for tuning in for my cream braised cabbage recipe. Let me know how you like it. Give it a try at home. It's super easy. If you have any questions, let me know. So thanks again for stopping by and um, call your friends and your family. I'm sending love out there. I hope you're all doing well. Okay. Mwah. Just cabbage and some beer. Good day. Okay, good.